Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue. Sushi Roll is a dice rolling version of Sushi Go. So if you like Sushi Go, you're really going to like Sushi Roll. It just adds dice in. Instead of drafting cards, you're going to be drafting dice. And each time you're going to roll those dice and hope that you get what you want. The scoring is pretty much the same from what I can tell from Sushi uh, Go. Most of that's going to be very familiar for you. The icons are going to be the same. So if you played that, it's going to be very easy to kind of get into this. I actually probably prefer the dice one better. It works with my family. I think with Sushi Go, I might play that more with adults, especially your serious gamers. I think they're going to like that because the dice are going to add some randomization to it. But with families, light gamers, filler, this works really, really well. The dice are beautiful. I like the production of it quite a bit. The cardboard is really nice. They really kind of went all out for this one, and it's much appreciated. So for me, this might be a little bit above Sushi Go just for my personal taste. And this is what I can easily recommend to you. Sushi Roll is a keeper. Sushi Roll, which is a Sushi Go dice game. It comes in a pretty large box, to be honest. You're going to get a rule sheet, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes. You're going to get a bag that says Sushi Roll and Game Right. They put their logo on everything. When you open it up, you're going to get a number of dice in here of all different shapes and colors. These are actually pretty nice dice, believe it or not. You're going to have these revolvers. This will signify who's first place, a conveyor belt that you'll see in a few minutes. Everybody will get a player board. Really nice components in this game. And what's great about this, this is also a cheat sheet. It tells you all what are on all the dice and kind of some of the scoring that will go along with it. This is fantastic. Really like the components in this. Here's your pudding tiles and all your little tiles that will have. Very nice. I mean, these, these scoring points are generic, but I, I like the components in this game. No insert in here, but I got to admit, everything is really nice. Here's a sushi roll, roll book. You can see a nice picture on the front. I think it's cute. Uh, you're going to have contents, no pictures, which was really screwy. We're trying to figure out what everything was. An overview and a setup over here. Picture of some of the components. One thing I didn't like is they didn't tell you what each of the shapes were. So here's how you play. This is really all the rules. Just one page right here, and you'll get, you'll get everything done. And then how to score something on the back here, which is kind of nice. And they're starting round and how to end it. So the rules, you can probably read this in probably 10, 15 minutes and be ready to roll. I didn't really have any questions. I'd already played Sushi Go, so this was easy to pick up for me. So this is, this is how the setup will be. This is three players here. So this person with the red conveyor belt would go first. I'm just putting them all on screen so you can see. You're going to start with two chopsticks and three menus each. Now, based on the number of players, you'll draw a number of dice from the bag. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So everybody's going to draw seven dice in a three-player game. Then everybody will roll the dice, and you'll put them up here on your conveyor belt, just like this, and you'll be able to draft a dice. So the menu tokens will allow you to re-roll as many of the dice as you want. When it's your turn, the chopsticks will allow you to take a die from somebody else. So let me show you how that works. So if I was this player, I could give up my chopstick, this is what I roll, but say I really, really, really want to get something I don't have over here. Say this. So I could give up one of my dice and switch it with him because of my chopsticks. And then I could take this die, and now that's my die. This guy might take, let's say he wanted some dumplings, and this guy wanted to also play this. Okay. So now what you would do is everybody would move down and exchange to the left their conveyor belts. And now this person would be first. Then you would take all the dice on a conveyor belt. You would re-roll them. All of the players would do so, and then you'd once again draft another die, whatever you wanted to get, and then you would repeat and repeat and repeat until there are no dice. Once all the dice have been drafted and you have no more drafting to do, then you would score based on your scoring down here. So uh, at the end of the round, whoever has the most of these will gain six points. Whoever has the second most will get three points. These are worth one point. It's all written right here. These are worth two. And if you were able to get the three-pointer, you'd be able to do so. Then you would look at these. A set is worth two. So if you had two of these, it would be worth four points. But three would be worth eight. The shrimp is also the same way. Where if you had multiples of those, one, five, and ten. And these are worth zero, six, and thirteen if you had one, two, or three of them. Now these nagamis are a little bit different. So when you draft... Let's say you were to draft one of these, they kind of go set on him. He just doubles whatever they're worth. So they can be pretty powerful. Uh, it can be worth up to uh, six points for one of those if you can get the right ones. 
the menus and the chopsticks will just give you extra uh, chopsticks. This one will give you extra menus, so you can have some more of those. And the puddings, you'll take these tokens, and whoever has the most of these at the end of the game will get six points, and whoever has the fewest will get negative six. You'll play three rounds of the game. Whoever has the most points is your winner. Who can I recommend this game to? Families. This is going to be a great family game. Light gamers, fillers, even, you know, you can take this to grandma's house and play with the people who don't play board games with you. A lot of dice rolling people understand that. It's a little bit tricky with the rule book and some of the iconography that's included in it, but you can easily pick it up with the little player aid they give you on your player board. Excellent. Scoring takes a little bit to get used to for non-gamers. If you're coming from Sushi Go, this is going to be a breeze for you. The only difference is, is you're rolling dice instead of cards. So that's going to be a good thing for you. But it really works in this aspect. I think that it adds another layer to the game. I enjoy having both in my collection. This is a really great little game to play. Sushi Roll was a hit for us, and I'm pretty sure it'll be a hit for you. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you liked it, please like it and hit that little subscribe button. That really helps out the channel, lets us know that you're getting the videos that you want. If you agreed or disagree with what I said, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say, and I promise that I will comment back. Thanks for watching, and everybody else, keep playing.